I am joined today by uh, a friend of mine, Karen Ferguson, to talk about something she's um, launching, launched, will be working on. Uh, but first, hello. Hello, Karen. Good morning, Andy. How are you? I'm not too bad, apart from a slightly gravelly voice, which sounds like I'm John Wayne eating gravel, but it's fine. <laughs> I'm sure there's a... I'm sure there's a demand for that somewhere, huh? <laughs> I could do some like little jingles while it's bad, couldn't I? And then like keep them for later. Absolutely, you should. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. So we're going to talk a bit about the Maven Club, a bit about your uh -huh. um, your life of faith journey. But what is the Maven Club right from the start? Just give us a bit of an overview, as simply as you can. What is the Maven Club all about? Yeah, I mean, the Maven Club really is set up to help people to get going or to keep growing in their professional world. Um, and quite often that might be somebody who's got a concept, an idea for something a bit like, you know, had you come to me a couple of years ago and said, I've got this crazy idea to start a radio station, then um, really we, we create a place to belong and to take away that loneliness to help you on that journey. And we do it in a number of ways. So first of all, we have um, almost like a little group of people who are at a similar stage to you or doing a similar thing. So in in the past, for me, what I found is I, I've gone to some networking groups. Now, I like to talk. I like to meet people. So that's fun. But you kind of come away and you go, it's got nothing to do with what I'm actually doing. And it hasn't really helped me. Um, or you can go for that one to one coaching experience, which can be really great at helping you to think about what you want to do. Um, but then you don't get that sense of peer support and, and real proper um, kind of like accountability and companionship and stuff. So I wanted to set something up where people really could belong. And so we created what we call crews where you are put into a crew and it's capped at 12 people. So you're never going to get too big that you don't know each other. Um, and then as part of that, part of the membership of that, what you'll get is you'll have a monthly meetup. We do lots of themed talks and discussions. You've got access to loads of resources um, and then you get one to one sessions as well. So you can have that really focused, bespoke time around what does it look like for you or what are you struggling with or what's going well? How do you want to grow a bit more or what's your next crazy fad idea and how do we like work with you on that so we so that's our main kind of thing is to have these crews where you can really belong lots of peer support and encouragement um but then on top of that we recognize that sometimes people need a little bit more specific training in things so we have labs and academies and labs are just up to a day's uh, sort of training experience and the academies are three or six months so that might be then looking at something that you really want to grow in so maybe you're in an organization and it's growing and you're thinking we really need a comms plan how do we go about our communication and uh, once you start to kind of scrape away at the layers there's a lot to think about so we'll do that as a as an academy so you then you've got some self-learning some online learning some some videos you might watch some worksheets you might do but then again we'll have meetups we'll have one-to-one -one sessions so you can really feel like you're growing in your professional career and then finally the last thing we do is we do bespoke projects and that's kind of more where I've come from in the more recent years which is where that person does have that idea um, and sometimes that's like a huge local authority or the NHS and they, they've got an idea, but they haven't got the capacity to roll that idea out. So we'll help them to think about what what's the best way to make this successful and sustainable and how do we get everyone trained up and on board? We might write training packages and all sorts. Um, so it's very bespoke around what that individual needs or what that organisation needs. So we have split it down into those three categories just so that it can help everybody to get what's right for them in that time. That wasn't a very quick summary at all. No, it was interesting, though. I'll tell you what <laughs> I picked up on. Um, you said groups of 12 because um, back in the day, we used to run groups in the church. And part of that thing was discussion based around Bible and topics and stuff. But what I'd found was when you get to about 15 people. Mm -hmm. now it's really hard to talk and you could come away thinking oh, I've just sat there for two hours in silence because yeah. everyone else is talking yeah. when you've got six people it's just oh this is very close isn't it so actually 12 is a really good number and I remember that really clearly from it's it's just enough because not everyone's always going to be there so exactly. 12 is probably nine but nine is a great number and actually when you are all there 12 is great because you like you say you actually do I think our brains can kind of 
deal with with 12 with 11 other people yeah absolutely and I think also there'll be a whole host of personalities in that um and so depending on where you sort of sit on that spectrum if there's too many people um and you're perhaps a little bit more introverted or or shy in that setting then you can just get lost um if you've got some sort of quite loud and big contributors you can um you can manage it in a smaller group guilty um, because, <laughs> yeah guilty too um but because of that kind of number like you say people can't always make it because life happens right and you can't always even with the best intention so um we we will we do do smaller groups but we'll cap it and i think that's a really important thing and with our uh, academies we actually cap them at eight because we just want that to be a really good um time of learning where people feel like it's very very much work into their needs so that they feel like they're they start somewhere and they actually leave feeling more equipped and more more confident that's what we want to see is that confidence and knowledge to grow um and and essentially people not to feel lonely it is so lonely if you're being entrepreneurial or pioneering or anything like that um, and that great old friend imposter syndrome will hang around as much as possible to try to take us out. So, uh, yeah, so we're hoping to take away that loneliness and and, and just to bring such encouragement because um, so many people have got amazing ideas and with the right support and focus and encouragement. Oh, isn't it amazing what could come from this? Like, that's what really excites me, just to think of what things might be birthed and come to life through this. Yeah, um, it, it is lonely. I mean, I've got an amazing team. I've got a wife. I've got a family. We've got supporters. We've got trustees. And there's all these, I suppose, levels of support operating in different ways. And yet still, quite often, as the as the guy who's at the top of this one, it's mm -hmm. it's still quite a lonely place when you're standing there. I mean, yesterday... Um, I had to make a decision with cancelling all live radio for the day because we had a medical emergency come up. Yeah. That sort of decision actually was really easy for me. Uh -huh. Other decisions, it, it can feel really hard. Well, how do I do this? Should I do this? There's yeah. nobody else who's doing pure 24-7 radio. So where do I go yeah, to meet somebody else who's as crazy as I am? Yeah, and I think it is kind of meeting your crazies that help <laughs> as well, isn't it? Um, but it, it, it is that sense of you always feel like you should know or why is something that seems so big for you but is very easy for someone else and, and we'll all have those different challenges mm -hmm. and there's something about that peer support of um being able to just chat that through in a safe space to kind of go you're not you're not strange you're not weird or hey I tried that and that actually worked for me and that real sense of kind of not being alone um and you're in you're in a growth thing you know you do have a team so that's why you were in different crew to somebody that's it's just a very early startup idea because the challenges they're facing are quite different you have faced them but what you're going through now is you know that growth stage and sort of thinking how do we do this and finances become a big deal don't they and all of those other sort of challenges and stuff so and one of the reasons the maven club started is because i was previously i was i was doing a lot of concept development with people and terrible don't get a business plan from me but my 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 business plan was basically do yourself out of a job you know that isn't that a terrible business plan but the reality was that I wanted to work with people to help them to get their play their their idea to a place where it could flourish and it could be sustainable and so the, the idea was that I do myself out of a job I walk with them for a certain amount of time and then they're feeling more competent but I've you know, I've stayed in touch with most of those people because I've really invested and I love to see what they're doing and hear their stories. And I just saw increasingly now they're at the stage, they're a few years down the line, they maybe have a team and they or maybe that some of the charities that I, I've worked with, they're now looking at, you know, funding bids and stuff like that. And their challenges are entirely different. And actually, it's really hard as a leader when you've birthed something that is yours and you've lived and breathed it to then grow and let go of bits. Um, and to, and that, that's the only way it really does grow. So I, I was finding that I was having more and more conversations with those that I'd worked with in the early days who have become successful, but are now like, we don't know what it looks like to be a CEO or what this these challenges, how to face those. So that's when I kind of thought, you know, I'm... It, I need to do something that helps people at different stages 
um, in a way where they've got peers around them that are going to do far more because I don't know what it's like for you Andy but I sometimes find that just being in a room and listening to people or asking a question that that has been on your mind you can find the answer just because you're with other people yeah. um and and there's something quite magical about that isn't there sometimes mm. where you just feel a sense of safety that you can explore and feel feel encouraged to have a go and it's okay to make mistakes as well and that's the other thing isn't it it'd be about being around people where you know failure is part of it and it's okay and how do we manage ourselves and pick ourselves up from that so and i'll tell you the image in my head what's the thing with the bushes where you shape is that topiary where you like make, make a ball mm. out of a hedge all that stuff i don't know now i wish my quiz partners were here where's no. where's steve and dr <laughs> kevin when you need them huh? i don't know but that one let's anyway say yes <laughs> okay let's go for that but that's in my head and the problem is if we are standing there sculpting and we're trying to make a ball out of a hedge actually we need people who aren't going to say yes boss because they, they're working for us who are slightly enough removed to say do you know what you've got a big you've got a big bulbous thing sticking out there that's not supposed to be yeah. there that you can't see because yeah. when you're turning around you've got the wrong perspective that's where other people not in a nasty way but just saying did you know it's sticking out which nobody else wants to say who's working perhaps yeah. For you because they're your, you know, they're, they're, they're people who employ by you, for example. But somebody else, you can come along and say, "That's not, that's not straight." You, you, you might, yeah. might, might want to fix that. So. Very much so. And you don't always know what your blind spots are, do you? Yeah. When you're really in it and you're absorbed in it, you can't always see in the same way that someone else may be able to. Um, so that sense of kind of being a part of something is is really helpful. And and also the one to one sessions. I mean. It, they are just so pivotal in terms of being able to think wow I was overwhelmed but now I feel like I've got a next step idea and I feel like I can still do this and yeah I was meant to do this and one of the biggest battles for most people is is not what else is happening to them but it's what's happening inside of them you know the the, the voices in our head yep. are often the hardest ones to overcome um, and when you find yourself in a place where you can safely kind of admit that and then hear that that's actually not so abnormal. Other people hear these same voices in their head um, and you can start to normalize that struggle. It's really releasing, actually, and really helpful for growth. Um, you realize what sort of your biggest battle is off in your own mind um, and your own limitations or your own blind spots. So, yeah, it's it's good to have people together encouraging them. Always. Uh, right, let's go back a bit in time then. So what's your journey of faith? I, I love to find out what people are doing, but I really delight in finding out not just what they do, but how on earth did you get to this point? Because I love yeah. that journey. So what's what's your story of faith? Um, yeah, don't you love that beautiful gift of hindsight when it all makes sense and then you can call it <laughs> faith? Whereas at the time it's like <laughs> quite foolishness maybe. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm one of these these people that's that's really really privileged because I um, grew up in a home where I was loved my mum and dad became Christians in I think when I was really really young so I kind of grew up in a great um, church environment knew I was loved I'm one of four siblings um, and I, I didn't feel like we were compared or anything I felt really uh, released to be me um, and I know that that is a, quite an unusual story, really, to have that. Funnily enough, when you're then a teenager and you've got a faith and stuff, you can sort of feel like you haven't really got a testimony. Nowadays, as an adult, I'm like, whoa, I own that testimony. What a joy not to have those struggles and stuff. Um, and then um, I I basically, um, I got married really young, Um the first time round um, and um, had children really young and essentially took a, a bit of a, a career break to focus on being a full-time mum really but in the church I was involved in um, it was it, it we had it in a in a school that was in a deprived area that you know had everything all of those lovely labels and stickers attached to it. And um, we were just asked um, as a church if we would perhaps just get involved in supporting families. Um, and so uh, that was my heart to do that. I, I, I'd always come from a place where I, I recognized how privileged I was. My, my dad was born out of wedlock during the war and you know he was put, placed into a home and stuff. And so um, I, I have that heritage of trauma a traumatic childhood for him 
that by the grace of God that had didn't come through and you know he 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 is and the most amazing father and grandfather and man and husband and friend and everything and I I recognize that so I always felt like I wanted to pay something back because I felt privileged to have had a home where I was loved and so I wanted to get involved and one thing led to another and before I knew it we were actually um asked by the innovation unit which was part of the UK government to write a parenting program wow. and that's when my my knowledge of imposter syndrome kind of very much kicked in me like I'm just a mom what's going on but a series of events we we essentially wrote this um this program we we didn't call it a parenting program because I feel like that label in itself is so accusational it was a family skills program and it was created with real people from the school from this environment that has all these labels just to show the reality of life and family life not for us to say this is how you should do it but for people to do lots of reflective work and have some ideas of different skills and try things out um, and it, it kind of took off and was a, a bit of a success and um, I remember the the local authority um, then like they had a meeting with us and we'd we'd put all of this stuff together with DVDs and workbooks and training packages and like all completely doing it <laughs> first time not really having a clue um, and they like came and looked and they said yeah we want this in all 175 schools and we want you to train like TAs and that to, to run this and it's like oh my gosh <laughs> so our business was born but it wasn't thought about it just was a set of circumstances fast forward a little bit our family moved overseas for um uh we we were uh, part of setting up an NGO and and a, and a church plant um in Brazil so I kind of left that behind to go off and do that that didn't go well it didn't work out for us visa wise we were forced to come back and at that point um that is the shortest way I've ever told that story it's a very long story but um at that point I was approached by another local authority that knew me from this program before and said we've got this idea for an early years program and we haven't got a clue what to do you did that can you help us and then again I'm like no I'm just a of me how can I do that um, but felt that nudge and, and did it. So I kind of became a consultant accidentally um, and started to, to help um, this other local authority, at which point it then needed to become a business. And when it became a business, I, I thought, well, I want to see if this works in a field that I'm not so familiar in. So I partnered with somebody and looked at um, substance misuse. Um, um, so we created a, a program that was aimed actually at the, in, in prison. We'd seen a link between substance misuse and reoffending and literacy levels. And so we created a program that was still all evidence based and CBT based and stuff, but um, very much looked at bite sized things and, and pictorial things so that the words didn't get in the way from that learning and that reflection and stuff. And then off the back of that, just lots and lots of different things and um, found different people just, you know, coming and asking for support. And then the next project would come and the next project would come and found myself sitting in in uh, meetings and stuff where I'd be asked if I'd work in organisations at the core of like, you know, I'd be in London with a senior leadership team of a massive national thing and thinking, qualifications wise I couldn't walk into your organization and get the lowest of low jobs you know and um but just found through this process that you start to you start to to um perhaps fight the imposter syndrome and learn that you are you have got some gifts and that those can be used and utilized and you know God does work in mysterious ways and places us in in different places so I spent the last 10 years working in concept development in and that's been from individuals to like like I say huge organizations or um the nice nice challenging ones are the collaborations between like local authority NHS and another charity that want to work together but really don't know how to so those those have been those have been great actually um and then always coming in from this place of seeing the person and the value and looking to tease out the, the strengths and not just criticise the, the, the difficult parts and stuff, but to, to help people. And I think also when you're working with entrepreneurs, they, um, 
they want to start things. They don't always want to do the harder part in the middle and, and the sort of sustainability. So a lot of the time I'm, I'm helping them to manage the next thing and not not do it quite yet, but not to not to crush them, but to help them to sort of manage what still needs setting up and what bits need doing now. Um, and then you can bring in the next idea and stuff. So that's kind of like a bit of my journey. I think once you've been around for a while, it can take a long time to tell the whole story, but that's sort of the professional journey, if you like that. Um, there was a period of time where I was director of communications at a theology college as well. Um, and I, I sort of was doing that alongside the business, but I think my heart um, to, to do business was just so overwhelming that decided that that's really what I needed to be doing all the time. So We all have different skill sets and giftings, um, but it's really amazing to see how God has opened doors that you possibly didn't even know existed uh -huh. <laughs> to put you in places that you thought, like you said, how, how am I here? And yet you're there because God clearly wanted you to be there um in order to learn to do to grow to develop to to find these ways and now we can fast forward on from all that lot to the maven club of how can i help people which through all of your story that's the one common thread is how do i help an individual do what god has called them to do yeah and i think like i remember really clearly I think I was about like 19, 20, 21. I just remember God giving me a really clear vision to look through his lenses, um, not to see what I see, but to see what he sees. And that's kind of been my mission in life is to see what God sees and to and and to do whatever I can to call it out. Right. And, you know, on a, a sort of voluntary basis, I've been involved in quite a number of charities and organizations where the, the damage that people walk in and the pain that they walk in, if I get to just be a small part of saying, that's not what I see, this is what I see. And then you see them start to walk into the reality of who they can be. It is, it's addictive. It's the most beautiful blessing to see somebody that didn't know something good about themselves or hasn't heard something good about themselves to then start to take those steps into who they truly are meant to be and walking in that fullness. And yeah, and so the Maven Club is an extension of that really. It's it's doing that in a professional environment, but I still do that in other environments as well because I just think, isn't it amazing to see people be who they're meant to be and walk in that fullness? And if you if you get to say something that helps somebody, what a privilege. Um, yes, basically. Um, I, that that very perfectly finishes off the idea of what's the Maven Club. Because then it speaks of your heart of, okay, this this is it's a business at one level, but it's also it's a passion and it's a it's it's a lifelong journey that you've had so many experiences from from Brazil from you from what your dad went through, all of that then you know adds together and multiplies in the way that only God can of yeah. redeeming out the bad stuff and and the good stuff growing so magnificently that then you're here with clearly such a heart and passion to actually serve individuals who, I mean, I, I know what it's like to be CEO of a radio station when people said, this is mad. Um, I've had that my entire life with stuff I've wanted to do, I suppose, mm -hmm. as a sort of a touch of the entrepreneur. But I remember when we had a shop at one point and with somebody who came up who I thought would be really opposed to the fact we sold our house, we invested everything into a business. And he said, you probably think I don't think this is a good idea. And I said, that's exactly what I was thinking. He said, but you did what people don't do. You took a chance and whether it works or whether it fails you tried and most people don't try and i guess that's your heart and passion is to get people to step away from here's my idea to here's my idea i'm gonna try yeah and share it and and that's the scary thing you know when an idea becomes released into the critical world it's it is scary um and so being there to help people and to to kind of just yeah walk through that with them and and help them to um not be overwhelmed by that is is great and and obviously more recently you know um i, I got remarried last year to ken and um you you think how worlds were entirely different but actually he he did the he did it a very sensible route he's a, he's a doctor but he did he did his masters um looking at sort of leadership um, and then took on some pretty um, 
serious positions within the NHS at leadership and stuff. So that that sort of um, educated approach with great big organisations as well is just proving to be so valuable to what we're doing in the Maven Club as well, because mine has been so much more grassroots. And although obviously I've done a lot in large organisations, I think my heart and my leaning is always in that individual's ideas and bringing that to life. Um, so it's really lovely now that we've kind of got this spectrum between us of, of experience and what does it mean to nurture leaders and and ideas. So, yeah. Um, I'm presuming, therefore, that the Maven Club is not a local thing to where you live, but this is, is this a, a, a remote thing, support? Yeah, it is very much so. Um, I think I think the world changed, didn't it, with the, the sort of uh, the little pandemic moment that we uh, all experienced. And I did used to do a fair bit of video conferencing before that, but I think now it's become people's norm and the, the reality of you know, a lot of the trustee meetings and stuff I have now are online and and that saves a lot of time in travel and that and you can be quite um, productive and stuff. I, I didn't want geography to stop people. Um, so it is a it is a virtual experience. However, that that is a really strange thing for me because I love people and I love being in the same room as people. Um, but I I feel like we've made it personable enough and um, and bespoke enough and interested enough in the individual that that it can it can work. And I think that there's something quite exciting in that because within your crew you can have really different sort of uh, demographics and, and and geography going on, and so you're connecting with people that you maybe wouldn't have that opportunity to in the same way. Now, if we get really huge, then I'd love to be able to do in-person things as well. But um, this is really about making it work and making it affordable for people because the bespoke work is not not everyone can afford to have someone just come and work alongside them. Whereas being a member of a crew, you know, it's 30 quid a month, but you get all this stuff thrown in. You get these one to one sessions um, as well. So it, it's like you're getting so much for your money and then you're meeting people that you perhaps wouldn't get access to. And if that helps you grow in your journey or helps your idea grow, then I'd say that's probably money well spent. So where do people find out about you then? I guess you're on socials, websites and stuff. Yeah, we're on socials. Um, but, you know, we're kind of living by what we promote in that we, we we don't have this horrendously large budget or anything. We, you know, it's an organic growth and um, really looking to connect relationally. That's so important. So, but we, we're, we're welcoming people. So you can, you can find us on socials or you can just go to themavenclub.co.uk and find out more there. Get in contact if you want to. We're actually, um, we're actually piloting a couple of crews at the moment and we have got a couple of free spaces for a six month membership to be part of that pilot, either in the growth crew or the comms crew. So if you work in communications, marketing, um, anything along that line, um, please do get in touch. Or if you're at that stage, if you're an Andy B and you've, you've birthed something, you're growing it, um, maybe it's within its first sort of five years of existence or so, um, come and join our growth crew and, and, and meet up with others who are on that same sort of journey, different experience, but where you're bound to get some some good support and, and not feel alone. So we've got a couple of spaces that are going. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, they can they can email us through the website or just info at themavenclub.co.uk and um, we'd love to welcome you on board. Fab. Um, thank you, Karen. I knew a small, tiny piece of that journey, uh, but it's very fascinating to hear just I, I say this frequently and maybe it sounds boring if people keep hearing this but it's exciting because i keep on seeing this amazing tapestry of interwoven moments of life where you think what am i going through this for this is got is this pointless what's this got to do anything like trucking what's that got to do with running a radio station and yet having been a truck driver is wonderful because we do quite a lot of traveling and we've got much more traveling coming up so that one skill that's just one is perfect for what i have to do yeah. yeah yeah it's never wasted is it no. that's that's that sort of like even in those really challenging times and you know if you do do anything like this 
there are challenging times that comes with the territory but even in those challenging times if your if your mindset is to recognize that nothing is wasted um you do view it differently um, mm. and it will be used in a good way at some point um and as we get older and we look back we can see that more clearly can't we um at the time it's not always so easy and it's confusing at times isn't it to be kind of still going for something when you're not quite sure if this is working out or not <laughs> but um you know that's why we're here to help you to help bring normality to that cool uh, just give us the one the, the website one more time for people it's themavenclub.co.uk um, Karen, thank you for sharing some time and just sharing your heart, your passion, and also uh, about the Maven Club, which I just think is brilliant. So um, thank you. Thank you.